we're going to be palpating flexor pollicis longus in this video. So we're going to talk about its insertion and work its way back towards the origin. Now, in its name, longus meaning longer, there is a brevis in the hand, but for now we're going to discuss just this muscle. Its insertion is going to be into the base of the distal phalanx of the thumb. That's going to be acting on this interphalangeal joint as well as on the metacarpal phalangeal joint, the carpal metacarpal joint and the wrist. Now, interesting, its pathway is one of the nine tendons going through the carpal tunnel. So it accompanies flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus as they go through this region here. So as I add a little bit of resistance to that distal phalanx inflection, we're going to follow our tendon heading medial to both trapezium and scaphoids tubercles as it makes its way with those other two muscles through this carpal tunnel. As it crosses, it's then going to head over towards the anterior surface of the radius. Now, a lot of texts reference its origin is on this distal anterior surface of the radius. We've got to make sure that we're above pronator quadratus, which you can look in another video, which is taking up the most distal part. So you're going a little bit higher than pro quadratus's origin. And I'm going to ask my partner to repeat flexion of the thumb, and I can easily feel, and you can probably even see my fingers going up and down in this region. So there's actually two different variations of this muscle in different reference texts, and one of which ends in this area. So the origin is here on that anterior kind of middle distal surface of the radius and its interosseous membrane. But there are and is a longer variation of this muscle, which actually has a slip that follows very similar to flexor digitorum superficialis. So we're going to take a look and see if our partner has that one today. She's going to keep repeating that action. And what you would do is follow a similar pathway that superficialis did up towards the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Now I'm not feeling a whole lot in this case, but if we did, you should be feeling your fingers going up and down. The longer version of this muscle has two attachments up here, similar again to superficialis in one being on the coronoid process of the ulna and the other attachment crossing the elbow joint and inserting onto the medial epicondyle of the humerus right here. So if your muscle is the shorter version, you'll be doing flexion of the carpal metacarpal, metacarpal phalangeal and interphalangeal joint, as well as a little bit of weak wrist flexion in this. If you have the long version, it might have some relationship to do with some pronation as well as weak elbow flexion. For the purpose of this though, we're mainly going to be sticking with the shorter version and motion of the thumb. This muscle is also innervated by the median nerve.